I want to show you something right now about our next guest, Pastor Rob Thompson of Family Harvest Church in Tinley Park, Illinois. It's just a suburb of Chicago. Let's watch this together and see what God is doing through Family Harvest Church. Interesting. Uh, our first guest there, Dan Caleb, is talking about relationships and how we need to build relationships with Jewish people before we come on strong and say, you need to repent, you need to get saved. You know, you got to establish relationships. And that is something that Pastor Rob Thompson, God has given him insights and anointing for. He's done a lot of study and research about it, also about Christian leadership. So please join Joni and me as we welcome back from the greater Chicagoland area, the senior pastor of Family Harvest Church, Pastor Rob Thompson. Joni, so sweet, so sweet to see you. All right, how long now have you been in Chicagoland? I've, I've actually lived in Chicago all my life. That's, wow. That, so if I've been in Chicago for a little while, let's, let's just say I've been there probably longer than you two have been alive. All right, well, I know and the White Sox. I know and, for sure for Joni. Yeah, I mean, I'm not so sure, sure Marcus, Joni's but for you. Joni's pretty young. Yeah. I'm the ancient of days. Now, we know the Cubs and the White Sox haven't done so well in baseball, but how about the Blackhawks? But, you know, we, but we believe that they have. I mean, you know, okay. there's something about Chicago fans <laughs> that they believe. <laughs> they just really believe. But the Blackhawks, I mean, the last couple of years brought home a couple of Stanley Cups. Yeah. And, and you know, we do, we do pretty good. And, but those games get kind of rowdy. You know, they can get kind of rowdy. They do. They may not be the most Christ-like and they get to beating up on one another, but it's a lot of fun. So our first guest was talking about relationships. Wow. What do you look for in a relationship? Here you are, a busy pastor. You really can't get very close to a lot of people just because of time. Well, you know, that's really true. But something that Dan said, I mean, his really almost parting statement was, you know, we really need to build a relationship with the Jewish people. Yes. He was very correct also in, in, in the things that you and he were discussing when he said, um, and, and talking to you about that, and, and you responded to him that, you know, Christians really need to repent toward the Jews for some of the things that have really gone on. Yeah. I don't think that the Christians really understand how really close to Judaism that they are. I had a Jew tell me, he said, you know, he said, well, you and I, we're just different. I said, honestly, I don't think we're different at all. I said, we're kind of, we're an extension of Judaism. We're not independent of Judaism. And I think that what we've done is we have, over these last approximately two to 300 years, we have, and, and really starting somewhere around the Reformation, we actually began to distance ourselves from the Jew, yeah. because it distanced us from persecution, from being marginalized, mm -hmm. and from actually being the sojourners that the Jews have been all these years. But when you mentioned that thing, of, uh, Marcus, about relationships, people don't really understand the qualification of relationship. When we talk about building relationship and friendship evangelism and really helping you know, going out there and really kind of getting back out into uh, the cultural mandate, so to speak, that people talk about. What, what we've done is we've actually taken the immature and we've thrown them back into the very thing that Christ had redeemed them from. And what we never did was we never taught them the qualification. So that when you're looking for relationships, you have to have certain criteria for it. Yes. Every relationship has rules both to enter it and to remain within it. Your relationship with Joni, it has rules to has enter it. has a lot it. of rules. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? You know what? As, oh, they're good rules. Absolutely, yeah. that they, absolutely that they are. You know, people don't believe that God's rules were actually principles of success. Wow. They, they have absolutely no idea. You know, the, in, and even with Christ, they, they have the idea that there are no rules with Jesus. 
are you, are you sure? I mean, you get married, you know, and when you get married, you think that there are no rules? Oh, no, when you make a commitment, there are greater rules. When we have no commitment to each other, hey, you can do whatever you believe that's the right thing for you to do, and that qualifies whether I want to continue my relationship yeah. with you. You prove to me who you are all the time. And so even with the Jew, when we make relationships, we don't go down to the local pub or the local club or bar and just pick out somebody that's out in the crowd and have a relationship with them. We actually have a relationship with someone that Christ will allow us to have influence with. And that's what we're supposed to be doing every day. And a lot of times what we do is we throw people out there and tell them that they need to have relationships with people while we never really give them the qualifications for relationship. So what are some of those qualifications? Well, you know, for me, I, I had probably one of the most popular ministers in the world, someone that you know very well, who will remain nameless so I can give this story, who, to, who, who said to me, had, had me on their television program and said, you know, everywhere I go, people ask me if I know you. And, and, I, and I said to them, I, well, I, 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 I don't. They said, well, you need to. So he said, everywhere I go, people say the same thing. He said, so I wanted you to be here. He said, because we're supposed to be friends. I said, well, if it's God's will for us to be friends, then we will. And so we started the text thing. The, you know, the cell phone, leave the voicemail issue. You know how, how we do that. We did the, you know, a little bit of email, a little bit of texting, you know, a little bit of the other social network things. And finally, I, I said to them, because we were talking about, you know, you come here, I go there, we do all this stuff. I said, you know, in order to qualify for relationships with the great, I said, there has to be requirements. I said, please give me your requirements so that I can exceed them. If you don't give me requirements, I can't exceed anything. I can't become better in your eyes if you're just always viewing me as a person. So tell me what it is that really makes you smile. And I'll bring a smile to your face all the time. I said, tell me what your best friend does. And I said, and I want to exceed that. I don't want to be your best friend. I said, I just want to perform as though I were. And I said, and by the way, let me give you mine. I said, number one, my friends must be committed to long lasting relationships. You can't build health long term. You can't build wealth long term. I can't influence your children. You don't want your kids going down the street and finding out from a university professor how they're supposed to believe. You send them off to college believing in Jesus. They come back from college believing in anything but. Yeah. You know? And so I said, I want to influence your kids. I want you to influence mine. I want them calling you when they have a problem with me. I don't want them calling someone else. I said, number two, my friends have got to have empires inside them. How can I help you build your empire? How can I add value to you? I don't want to become a leech to your life. I want to help you reach in your life. I said, the third thing is, is that my friends must be sowers. One of the greatest challenges that we'll ever have is, is when we go to the mall with somebody and they're always waiting for you to buy them something. You have to have people in your life that love to give because yes. you have to have giving contests. David had giving contests in his life with people. And then I said, my friends have to qualify for my gifts. Because if you know that every person that you, let's say you and Joni were upgrading your equipment and you wanted to be able to give the equipment that you already had, would you give that equipment to people that weren't going to be able to maximize its ability? after all the work you put in? Absolutely not. My friends have to qualify to receive my Good seat. Good point. You know, I said, then my friends have to prize integrity above relationship. Because faithful are the wounds of a friend. You have to prize integrity. Wow. We, we have spent so many years, all my Christianity, Marcus, Joni, all my Christianity, what we've done is that we have actually become the opposite of a friend. Because faithful are the wounds of a friend. The kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The kissing proves that a person's my enemy. Wow. It, the wound 
proves that the person is my friend. And then I said, lastly, I said, my friends must, must be willing to confront my enemies. I don't need a frenemy. I need a friend. Wow. And so I, I hit the send button off to the person that it went, and, you know, I never heard from them again. Wow. Mm. Because that was proof. You lay down your requirements in anything in life. You give a person a job description, a husband talks to a wife, a wife says to a husband, everybody's got requirements, and whether or not a person wants to come up to that will determine whether or not that they're the person you're looking for. Otherwise, you've wasted the mm. only commodity that you have that is greater than all the wealth in the world, and that's time. Yes, and you can't ever yeah. get that time back. And we're limited in time. I know another thing you talk about that's so neat is about relationships between husbands and wives and uh, how that so many people, when they get married, they just, they then... Are, they don't realize there's two sides. There's a romantic side and there's a business side of relationships. Mm -hmm. Talk about that just a little bit. Well, everyone loves to date, and that's the reason why many people don't get married now, because they love the romantic side. They don't want the hassle side. They don't want the curling iron. They don't want, you know, they don't want the, they don't want the kids and the, and the, you know, the necessary things that children bring. They're not really looking for that depth of commitment. They just want to be romantic. But when it comes down to the money side, over 90% of people, I was sitting on the airplane the way down here um, last night, and I'm sitting next to this person who tells me, um, wonderful, wonderful gentleman, but he told me, he said, you know, I've, I've been divorced for three and a half years. And I said, and what would you think was the reason for the divorce? He said, you know, I could never make enough money for her. She was a trust fund baby. Wow. You know, and I just could never make enough. And so I worked really hard, and you know what was neglected? My kids. Oh. My kids were neglected. I don't have a relationship with them. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't really, I'm really working on getting that back. He said, but if, you know, really, if my, if my ex-wife had a broom, she could ride it. Mm. It's just because she was just so mad about life. And so there are those two sides to relationships. That's the reason why you do all the qualification of relationship before you get married because yes, you realize so you realize that once you get there yes. there is another side that you must begin yeah. to embrace and you know how you must know how to separate Marcus those two sides the romantic side yes that needs people need to continue to fix themselves up statistically by the age of 46 men no longer take care of themselves hmm. because they want to eat what they want they want to do what they want. They want to become a slob. They want to become part of, you know, the job of the HUD uh, tribe. And they want to just hang out. And they don't take care of themselves anymore. Which is selfishness. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because when you get married, it, you know, when you woke up this morning, you didn't really dress for you. Now, of course, Daystar is a huge organization that goes around the world. But you know the person that you really were going to impress, it was Joni. Yeah, I do my best on that day. <laughs> because, because. There's rewards she, from that. <laughs> because she's the only person in the world that means anything to you. Yes. Men, men throughout their marriages do everything they can do to still win the heart of the one that they loved when they were young. You know, I want to say this to you. This is such wonderful wisdom that Pastor Rob Thompson is sharing. And if you didn't start out right, maybe you didn't have the qualifications, you didn't have uh, understanding about that, you can still start working on your relationship, both the romantic side and the business side. And that's why counselors are so important. That's why pastors are so important. Or those older men or older women in the Lord that you can receive wise counsel from. And I want to encourage you to do that today. Because if you thought there was some kind of pain in your body and maybe it was cancer or something like that, you wouldn't hesitate about going and seeking out the best specialist. You would do, take whatever medicine was necessary, whatever surgery, whatever therapy, 
And folks, we need to do that with our marriages because it doesn't just impact us, it impacts our children and our relationships around us and ultimately the kingdom of God. So I want to encourage you about that today and I want to show you a wonderful resource that Pastor Rob Thompson has, the 10 Critical Laws of Relationships. Pers it's a personal development kit. And we don't have time to talk about today about leadership. There's been many strong leaders down through the annals of time, but those that didn't have godly character ended up imploding and also hurting many others. We need to have Christian leadership, but with godly character. And I know all of that is addressed in that. And when you're in this greater Chicagoland area, go by and visit Family Harvest Church in Tinley Park. You'll be blessed to do so. So get your Bibles, get ready, because right after this song, Pastor Rob Thompson is going to share the Word of God. But if this has spoken to you today, talking about relationships, and you say, I need to do better, and I want a better relationship with my wife, with my husband, with my children, with my business partner, with my friends at school, with my parents, go to the phone right now. Call that number. Let us pray with you or go to daystar.com and click on prayer and you can send your prayer request electronically. Well, don't change that dial. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Pastor Rob Thompson has a bold message for you. That's next. I love that song. We can overcome. You know what, we, that's a personal pronoun. It's a plural personal pronoun. That means you and me. We can overcome because the overcoming one, the greater one, lives on the inside of us. If we can pray with you about that, call that number today or go to daystar.com. What a delight to have Pastor Rob Thompson with us of Family Harvest Church in Tinley Park, Illinois. He's going to be preaching on the subject, Secrets I've Learned. And don't forget about this great resource he's developed, The Ten Critical Laws of Relationships. So get your Bible, get your notepad and a pen, get ready to take notes, and let's welcome to the pulpit of the Daystar Television Network, Pastor Rob Thompson. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marcus. Joni, thank you very much. You know, there's a, there's a couple things that I want to talk to you about today that I think are really important. And it's really about the secrets that I've learned. You know, one of the most sobering things that I've discovered over all these years, I've been a Christian now for 38 years. I came to Christ in a mental institution, and that was where my beginning was. I was filled with the Holy Spirit in a barn. So I don't really have any kind of denominational affiliation. I don't bring anything to the table that would really cause a person to believe that I came from somewhere. But I recognized right away that one of the most important things that we had to do was we had to really come to a place where we were focusing in this earth about our relationships the same way that we focused in our relationship that we had with God. Let me read to you something that I wrote for you here because this is really important. It's foolish to believe, friends, that we are the ones who determine the outcome of our lives. Although people continually talk about how that they can determine the outcome of their life, that they're the person who really chooses what happens to them, I found that there is not a complete truth about this because the outcome of our lives is really determined by those to whom we grant access. Who are the people that we allow in our lives? Who have you allowed? Because people either bring a smile to your face or they bring a frown to your face. But now why is this true? Because relationships are magnetic. Remember this, you draw yourself you draw to yourself those very things that will either bless your life or the things that you wish that never, you never had gotten into. And so relationships are magnetic, either drawing you closer to or driving you further away from God's will for your life. Realize that both David and Solomon, David began the book of Psalms with relationships. Solomon began the book of Proverbs with relationships. 
These two books are the books that are really more hallowed than most other books in the entire Bible. The book of Proverbs, people talk about wisdom. That's the reason why that they were written. The book of Psalms, that when David was going through difficult moments or other people were facing challenging times, the book of Psalms was written as not only the realization of what was going on, but also a cry out to God for deliverance from the silly things that they'd gotten themselves into. And so David begins with these words, and he said, Blessed is the man that does not. Isn't it interesting that David actually begins with a double negative? He said, Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. He said, I would be blessed if I didn't. I'd be blessed if I didn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. And Solomon just, he begins with talking through all of chapter 1 about people that hate instruction. People that have walked away from what God had for them. But you know, there was one man in the Bible, a Bible character that we believe was really huge. And he was, had the greatest deliverance in all of the Bible. The one man that we call Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the guy who actually sent out the singers to sing and then they won the war. They won the battle by the singers. Now I can't talk about Jehoshaphat's courage. I can only talk about his faith. Because the battle was not Jehoshaphat's, but it was God's. But do you realize that in the very same chapter of that deliverance, within 14 verses, the Bible says that Jehoshaphat actually became a friend of the king of Israel, whose name was Ahaziah. And the Bible says that Ahaziah did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And so they were going to go into business together. And the Bible says that God actually destroyed the work of Jehoshaphat's hands because he became a friend of one of God's enemies. You see, everything that we get involved with, everything you touch, you go to the gas station, you go over to the convenience store, you go to the grocery store, you go to the department store, you go to the mall, you talk to people on the phone, you get inside your car. Everything that you touch, you begin a relationship with. Whether that relationship is going to be positive or negative is really what determines the direction of a person's life. So I want to give you four relationships that are musts. Four relationships that are musts. Number one, you have to have those in your life who strengthen your character. Who is around your life that strengthens your character? Compromise, because compromise, friends, is the pen that writes the story of our future regrets. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, the Bible gives us, it begins with these words. It says that when the time it was for kings to go out to battle, David remained at home. Where were the relationships that built David's character? They went out to battle. David remained at home and then all of a sudden, his relationship with Bathsheba had begun. Because of his embarrassment, he actually ended up having his army actually move away from, Jeho move away from um, his friend. And when he moved away from his friend, then his friend was killed. Do you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were very interested in one another. They would not allow each other to compromise. And all of them were put into the fiery furnace together because they wouldn't compromise. Number two, friends, are those I have to have in my life, those who inspire my faith. Because faith is not the absence of fear. Faith is denying fear the right to speak. In the book of Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, they took the man who was born on a, oh, he was, he was on a stretcher on top of the house. They opened up the top of this man's roof and put this man down. And the Bible said that Jesus seeing their faith said unto man, to the man, take up your bed and walk. And then the third relationship that I need to have are those that unlock my heart of gratitude. This one's really important. You know, many people walk around and they, they say, you know, the Lord's done this for me or the Lord did that for me. I'm just so blessed. God did this. Look what God did for me. Look what he did for me. You know, that's really true. God did it. But many times we forget the vessel that God actually brought it through. And here's my thought. 
Never allow the gifts that have been bestowed upon you to ever eclipse the gratitude for the one who bestowed them. Because every gift that you get comes from somewhere. Somebody did it in your life. Never forget that person. Never allow them to fade in your memory because they were the ones that said yes to God. Because so many others said no. And then lastly, the last relationship that you must have is this. You need to have in your life those who grant you an opportunity to give. Who is it in your life that helps you unlock your giving? One of the things that I really appreciate about Marcus and Joni is that they don't even realize how many millions of people around the world that they give an opportunity to every day to be able to sow their seed. And here's our thought, is that your seed is the only influence that your future will obey. Your present may be difficult, you may be going through very hard times, but your seed is the thing that can be planted that will bring forth a harvest that will change your life. David did it. In First Chronicles chapter 29, the Bible tells us that, that, you know, that David opened up to the leaders and said that Solomon, my son, is yet young and tender. He said, and the work is great because the palace is not for man, but for God. You know, I'm, I'm going to ask Marcus, Marcus, if you'd come over now, and, and I really want to pray for the people, because the people need yes. the touch of God. Pastor Rob Thompson, lives. hundreds of prayer calls have come in, and I want to encourage you quickly. This is an opportunity to have this great pastor, this man of God, to pray for you. Call that number. We'll include you in that prayer, or go to daystir.com and click on prayer. Don't forget the resource, 10 Critical Laws of Relationships, a personal development kit. You can go online to the website there and you can get that. So quickly get that call in and we're going to pray. In fact, Pastor Rob, would you just go ahead and lay hands on these now and begin to pray? And we will oh, include Father. you in that prayer as you're calling today. Father, Father, we yes, call Lord. upon you, your majesty. Only you can change the future of these Thank people. You, We're asking you, Father, that the anointing of God would come down upon them, that you would interrupt what hell has been attempting to do inside their lives, that you would stop those things in a negative fashion, in a negative way that they're going. And Father, we thank you for invading them with the divine. In the name of Jesus, we break the power of evil inside of the lives of these individuals. And Father, we ask you to give them a testimony, a testimony of your goodness, of your grace, of your love, of your magnificence, Father. We want to thank you. We want to thank you, Father, for your goodness in the lives of all these people and those that are calling right now. Father, may you touch their lives, and may they never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You're watching the fastest growing faith-based network in the world. Daystar. Experience it.